Today we've got the Dell Alienware M16, the gaming laptop for gamers who want you to know they're a gamer. Actually, I don't think this is really a great laptop for anybody. And as much as I hate doing negative reviews, in today's video we'll dive into the reasons why that is. So the build of the laptop is pretty similar to last year's. Um, so if you want more details, you can always check out my review I did on this model last year. The main difference being implied by the moniker this year, the M16. They've moved from the 15.7 inch screen to the 16 inch screen that all the major laptop developers seem to kind of move to 16 inch, 16 by 10. That I personally prefer, and it, it seems like most people prefer that over the 15.7 inch display. Uh, the frame is pretty much, it looks pretty much identical otherwise overall. You can tell the soft touch rubber keyboard deck that's kind of very pleasant feeling. The same perky RGB keyboard, a glass trackpad. And if I got to give Dell credit for one thing they do do really well, it's their keyboards. This isn't the mechanical option. They even do have a Cherry MX mechanical option. But just this, just their normal keyboard option is a step above most others in my opinion. You get no number pad, but you have this more spacious layout instead. Uh, the top, I believe, is a metal composite. The same for keyboard deck. The sort of metal composite, I want to say, but... I wouldn't take my word 100% on that. It's I'm the, kind of bad at telling it apart. Taking a look at ports on the right side, there's nothing. Come around to the rear of the laptop, you got two USB-C, um, two US, one USB-A, an HDMI, a mini display port, an SD card reader, and your barrel port for your charger. Other side of the laptop, you get another USB-A. Uh, Ethernet port and your headphone jack. Overall build quality is definitely good on it. I feel comfortable you can use this as a laptop. You could use it to bludgeon someone and then go right back to using it as a laptop. This is definitely a hefty guy so let's go ahead and take a look at the weight. Alright so weight is obviously relative. You give anybody a gaming laptop and they're used to using like a MacBook Air they're going to say this thing is heavy as heck but picking this guy up I would definitely say it is heavy as heck. It is so chunky that it doesn't balance on my kitchen scale. What will balance on there is the power brick really putting the brick into power brick coming in at 1.4 kilograms and then the total weight we'll have to take Dell's word for it 3.3 kilograms which is 700 grams more than the last gen Alienware with the 3070 Ti I reviewed. Taking a look at the screen, um, it's 2560 by 1600 p 240 hertz, and it's not HDR, so I can only give the reported values, not the actual measured ones using my uh, testing app, but it's 100% sRGB and 99.9% .9 DCI-P3. That's pretty impressive results. If you watched my review last year, you might remember I got terrible battery life around two hours and had the same problem again this year, although I think I finally figured out why. So let's talk about the laptop's biggest problem first, though, the Alienware Command Center, which ties in. It was bad last year, and it's still buggy and bad this year. This is a major problem because with a gaming laptop, if you want to change your performance mode and normally other important features like the MUX switch, you have to use the manufacturer's software, like, for example, Acer's Predator Sense, the Novo Vantage, etc., the Alienware Command Center lets you change between their different performance profiles and control your RGB, and that's about it. When my Command Center app was updating, something went wrong, and every time I tried opening it, the menus just all, like, spun, and it wouldn't let me actually do anything anymore. So I uninstalled it and tried reinstalling it, like, six times using the Dell installer, and none of those ever fixed it. It just still kept doing the same problem. Um, on a whim, though, while... The only work command center was uninstalled. I tried testing the battery life, and lo and behold, I got like six hours doing my normal test, which is about what you would expect um, from this laptop given its specs and 87 watt hour battery. So finally, I tried installing command center through the Microsoft Store, and for some reason that worked instead of using the Dell installer. But hey, uh, I got Command Center working again. One nice thing I can say is you get a very nice and extensive BIOS with Dell systems, at least the two I've reviewed. But th there's a lot of things in there that I guess they can put it in there, but it should really also be in the Command Center. Like, for example, a MUX switch, um, battery life control, and perhaps most importantly, there's an option there to overclock the CPU, which takes the CPU from running at 50 watts to 100 plus. I wouldn't have even known about this if it wasn't for watching the owner disown review. The wildest part about this is you can literally overclock the video card from Command Center, but have to go to BIOS to overclock the CPU. Maybe because Command Center is so bad when, when they try and add new features, it just kind of breaks. I don't know. 
So what kind of performance boost do you get from overclocking the CPU? Well, one quick example is Far Cry 6 at 1920 by 1200p. You go from 124 frames in the benchmark to 139 frames. Granted, if you're, if you're playing at like uh, higher, like 1600p, it's not going to matter as much. But still, you can see that's a lot of performance on the table. Taking a look at thermals and power draw, running Cinebench for 20 minutes using Dell's full speed performance profile, which sets the fans at max. It does run right up to its thermal limit at 100 degrees, but an impressive average of 130 watts. Running Cinebench and Unique Haven at the same time for 30 minutes, the CPU is averaging 127 watts and the GPU 67 watts. So what does this translate to while gaming? Let's take a look at Far Cry 6. Starting with the full speed mode, the fans are hitting 61 decibels, but we see the CPU running at 80 to 100 watts and the GPU running anywhere from 120 to 140 watts. So 200 to 230-ish total watts, that's pretty good total power draw. Here's performance mode, which seems to lower peak fan noise to 55-ish decibels and throttle the CPU as needed to stay below that. Still, you can see we're regularly hitting 200 watts total power draw. Balance mode takes you down to about 48 peak decibels. And quiet mode doesn't actually seem all that different in behavior from balanced mode. Alright, so let's take a look at our actual Cinebench scores. Without the overclock, the multi-core score was like 22,278. Turning that overclock on, you can see bumps that multi-core score up by like 7,000. And also the single core score actually was about 5% better than on the Legion 7 I just reviewed. The Far Cry 6, the built-in benchmark at 1080p, 139 frames. It's neck and neck right there with the Legion 7. 40 frames more than the closest contender. At 1440p, ultra settings actually 2 frames better at 126 frames per second than the Legion 7 I've just reviewed. Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1440p. 113 frames per second. And finally, fours of five at ultra settings. You can see it's about 25% better than the RTX 3070 Ti and the Alienware I reviewed last year. So like I said at the beginning, I really hate giving negative reviews, mostly because it's a lot of work for me when I have to spend hours troubleshooting a problem with a laptop, which doesn't always mean the review is going to be negative. I could just have a dud. And also, it it takes me a lot more time to figure out how to articulate the problems I have with a laptop than just kind of, if it's a laptop kind of I don't have any problems with, I can just kind of run default through the review at this point. So I'm certain there's a lot of people who own this machine and they're perfectly happy with it. And if you do, that's great. It's just a consumer good. And I guess in my opinion, it's fine for someone who doesn't plan on taking their laptop with them very often. And if you can make Dell's glitchy software work, it does put down some serious performance. But when you look at the weight, the giant outdated power brick, the battery issues I keep having, Dell's software, and something I forgot to mention earlier, despite advertising the USB-C ports as Thunderbolt, they don't support USB-C charging. So you're stuck taking the 1400 gram power brick with you everywhere. I mean, Dell does do some really mean sales, so maybe a bit later in the year if you pick it up for like sub $2,000 instead of the 2600 I paid for it. But still, I just there's just so many better options like a Legion, an Asus Strix, or maybe even one of the smaller brands, you know, look into something like Elutronics. So that's all I got. Make sure you subscribe if you watched this far. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I'm super stoked to return this guy and probably never review another Dell.